Welcome back to another video. Today we'll be looking at a digital camera from the year 2000. Well, this camera has something special up its sleeve, so I can't wait to show it to you. Stick around. No need to adjust your settings. That wasn't YouTube buffering. That intro is actually shot on subject of today's video. This is a Sony Mavica MVC-FD85. So I want to talk a little bit about this camera today. Um, I got this camera from Goodwill. But a camera like this is something I had used uh, around that time frame. And Sony did some really interesting things with their digital cameras. In fact, a lot of companies were doing interesting things because digital imaging was a new field and there was lots of ideas and some of them stuck, some of them didn't stick. But what's interesting about this one is that instead of writing to a memory card, this camera writes to a floppy disk. All right, so here we have the Sony Mavica MVC FD85, released in the year 2000 alongside the 90 version as well. So let's just talk about some of the features this camera has. It's 1.3 megapixel. It takes images to the floppy disk, which goes in. Uh, a floppy disk can hold six pictures. Um, and as you saw, it can also take videos. Videos can be 5, 10, or 15 seconds in length. Um, it does have an optical zoom. Uh, I think it's 2.8 as a digital zoom, uh, but as we all know, digital zooms are pretty useless. On the back, we have the LCD panel, which has a backlight, so let's turn it on. And we can turn the backlight on and off which also turns this light on and off. I'm not sure if the light is inside and it's using that to reflect it down behind, but that's my guess. Uh, I don't know why they didn't, didn't just cover this up, I think. What they're thinking is that if you're outdoors, there's just ambient light that is going into here that maybe would light it up, but I can't imagine that would work super well ever. Spinning back around front, it does offer that it can take uh, up to 1600 pictures and last for 2.5 hours, running off the optional battery, which was not included. Uh, but I'm not really sure what the point of that would be since you're only getting six pictures per disc. Uh, speaking of the battery, let's just pop that out. It's just a standard Sony camera camcorder battery, uh, the NP-F330. You can still buy these new, not from Sony, but from uh, aftermarket retailers on Amazon or whatever. So no point in trying to make your own pack. Uh, also, this probably is the original battery. Uh, having a good authority that these batteries last forever. So. Anyway, that's what came with it. And uh, it does also take a DC, it also has DC in. Um, I didn't get the cord for it, but probably not an issue. I did end up buying a uh, charger and replacement battery for this camera for about $11 from Amazon. It came as a pair. So pretty cheap to power this thing. Also, we have uh, AV out, so you could get a cable and you can display on your TV or you know wherever, maybe in a projector or something. Uh, also, in addition to that, floppy drive, this camera can take the memory stick to floppy drive adapter, which was sold separately, so it looks like a floppy disk, you put the memory stick in, and you can obviously write more data to those, I think. In 2000, memory sticks were probably 128 megabytes, so that makes the uh, total picture size more important, since now it can take 60 pictures instead of just six. Uh, anyway, let's turn it on again and go through the menus. There are not a lot of settings in here. Um, it's got this little button to go through things. Uh, so we have a setup menu. We can change video out from NTSC to PAL. We can change the language of the display, set the clock, turn this beep on and off, and change the brightness of the LCD. Under camera, we can turn digital zoom on and off. We can change the sharpness, change the white balance, change the flash level and change the exposure time. Um, I've left those all as defaults here. We can also have a file menu with disk tool in it. Disk tool allows you to format, copy a uh, disk that's in there. You can change how the files are created. You can change the image size here. So obviously I'm using uh, the highest resolution. If you go down smaller, you'll get more pictures, but not at that 1.3 megapixel. And you can change the receive mode to text, voice, email, or normal. Uh, I don't know what that does. Um, I don't think this thing has Wi-Fi from 2000 in it, so I'm not sure how that works. And then we have effects. So this does have some built-in effects, uh, solarized, black and white, sepia, negative art, and none of the above. And that's really it for options. Um, we also have a timer. 
So you can set a timer uh, for either recording a video or taking pictures. And then we've got some additional information on the screen here. Uh, this is the floppy, this is the resolution, this is how much battery time we have left. So the, with the built-in potentially original battery, we still have an hour and a half of usage left. And there are a couple other bu buttons here. We can change the volume, um, turn the backlight on and off as mentioned. We can turn the display text on and off. And we can go into the program menu and that will change what type of picture it's trying to take. Um, we can also modify the focus to be any of the different uh, lengths that we want instead of using autofocus. And that's really it. So it's, uh, by today's standards, a pretty simple camera, but when it was released, this was probably, uh, you know, a pretty high-end camera. Obviously the 90 version was a little higher end, but uh, this one I'm sure set you back a few dollars if you were to buy it new. Anyway, let's get in, into some comparisons. Uh, I do have some pictures that I've taken here uh, with this camera, and I'm going to be comparing those against my iPhone 14 Pro which I took ideally the same pictures with. So I'm gonna show you two pictures and these are pictures of my dog in my backyard. Um, I've taken these from the same position. I tried to have the dog sitting the same way, but you know how dogs are, they don't like to uh, cooperate super well. Anyway, uh, I'm not gonna tell you which is which immediately. See if you can figure out which is the iPhone 14 Pro and which is the Sony Mavica. This one is actually from the Sony, and then this one is from the iPhone 14. And then I've got one more set of pictures to show you. Uh, this is using the full optical zoom of the Sony camera and the full optical zoom of the iPhone, iPhone 14 Pro. So I'll show you this picture, and I'll show you this picture. I'll see if you can guess which one was taken from the Sony and which one was taken from the iPhone. This picture is from the Sony. So as you can see, uh, 1.3 megapixel, maybe not as bad as you thought it might have been. You know, definitely if you're doing any zooming in, any sort of real editing work, 1.3 megapixel is basically unusable for that. But if you're just looking at pictures, especially on YouTube videos where YouTube does white balancing, YouTube does compression, YouTube does all these things, it's really difficult to tell the difference. So this might be a cool camera to show some people just, uh, you know, what kind of cool tech you have out there. And I did take a couple more pictures as well, so let me just go through those. Uh, I tried to take some indoor pictures as well as outdoor pictures, some action shots, things like that. So let me just run through those really quickly. So this is an indoor picture using the built-in flash. Uh, it's my kid using the computer. It looks a little grainy. It's not super awesome. Here's a picture I took of my kids outside playing on the swing. Uh, they were definitely moving in this and it actually managed to capture it without too much uh, motion blur in it. So that's pretty impressive. It's not so great doing that in the dark, but uh, doing it outside full sun worked really well. And again, I'm using all default settings on the camera. I haven't done any sort of tuning for anything. This is a full digital zoom picture. Uh, so this is a totally in 6x digital zoom and it's really pixelated. You can definitely see the digital zoom there. And here's just a picture I took up close, uh, again, using all of the auto settings uh, of some flowers in my wife's garden. So this turned out really well. This looks like a really nice picture. Um, I think if you were looking at somebody's phone and saw this, you wouldn't know that it was from a camera that was 23 years old and then written to a floppy disk. I think that's all I had to talk about for this camera today. Uh, I'm really enjoying playing around with it. It's just kind of fun to use tech that's, you know, from 2000 and taking pictures and being able to put those onto uh, Facebook and, you know, sharing just fun images with a fun camera from a fun time. So anyway, uh, I hope you enjoyed and we'll catch you in the next video. Thanks for watching.